Well, thanks for coming. I uh, want to, uh, like I normally do, have a special thank you to our fans and our, uh, well, most directly our student body for our support. Uh, they've been awesome, and uh, they get challenged. I know maybe you get tired of hearing that. I know I certainly don't want to get tired of saying it, and I, I can speak on behalf of our players that uh, it's a motivating force to come walk in that stadium on a somewhat cold day and still see our fans with us and even stick around after halftime. Uh, the champions for the uh, Illinois game are as follows on defense. <coughs> Excuse me. On defense, you got Eli Apple is getting better and better each week. He had four out of four opportunities to make a play. He did. Uh, Duran Grant uh, also graded out of the champion. He was five out of five make plays. Didn't have as many opportunities. Uh, Josh Perry, Darren Lee, uh, Stevie Miller, and Joey Boso. And it was uh, awesome to see our players' reaction because uh, of the uh, respect they have for this guy. But the defensive player of the game was Curtis Grant. Played his best game as a Buckeye. On the uh, offensive side of the ball, uh, Evan Spencer, would it be hard for me not to name him as one of our most valuable players at this point midway through the season, but he was a champion. Uh, Dontre Wilson graded out a champion. It's great to see him do that. Uh, Jeff Hireman, Ezekiel Elliott, uh, Curtis Samuel, offensive line. You had Taylor Decker, and then we had co-players of the game, Jalen Marshall, who's uh, because of his work ethic and the way he's uh, approached the game in the past several months, was uh, offense player of the game, and Jacoby Boren uh, was all offense player of the game. On kicking, uh, Eric Smith was our special teams player of the game. And once again, uh, the coverage units were, were really good. We uh, sky kicked a little bit because of the wind and because of we uh, wanted to try something new. Uh, obviously, the first one wasn't very good. The kicker missed it. Uh, but, uh, you know, we usually go deep left. We had a lot of respect for that kick returner. And then once uh, I saw we were playing defense as well as we were, we didn't want to have something stupid happen. So we pounded the ball out of the end zone with the wind and, and tried to sky it uh, against the wind. So I'm going to obviously a big week, a big week. And, uh, um, you know, I hope the culture is here at Ohio State uh, that the most prepared team will win, not the most interviews, not the most uh, uh, conversations you have. So uh, the mentality that we want to have is uh, we want to really work hard Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to get ready for the game at 8 o'clock Saturday night. So with that, I'll answer any questions for you. Urban, what's the uh, what's the status of green things in the facility this week? Is that allowed or no? Oh, I don't know. I'm just we're just working on third downs and all that. We're not in just a, just a big game. Great idea though. <laughs> Great idea. You've coached a long time. You've coached in many rivalry games at all your stops. You have the rival here. Now you're playing a team that you lost to last year. You're tied for first place. It's a big game. I know you. I'd like to talk about motivation, that kind of thing with players. Is there anything different about like a rivalry game where the motivation is that deep-seated every year it's a rival versus a big game like this? Well, I think there's a lot of difference. You know, I got asked that last week a little bit. Uh, I can't remember who did that, but you know, I just grew up in the ten-year war, and you know, there's been a saying around here: you can lose every game you play except for the team up north. We all know that's not true. Uh, however, I'd love to have our players have a very clear understanding of rivalry games. Um, the pageantry of it, and when you come back, you know, to understand the rivalry, we have one rival here. What's happened in this situation is you have an excellent team. After watching them on fam film, they're a great team, and uh, they stand in the way of Big Ten championship. They stood in the way last year, and we failed. And so, um, does that make them a rival? It makes them, you know, in the way of something that we all want, and that's a Big Ten championship. So. I think it, it happened a little bit with, with with Wisconsin. I remember our first year, that was a big, because they went to three straight Rose Bowls. So I think that this is a credit to their university, their coaching staff, and most importantly, their players. And our guys know that. So to say this is a rivalry game, you know, that would diminish the rivalry that's been here for 100 years. Uh, this is a great game because it's two teams battling for first place. Rusty. Urban, aside from the Texas nose and the risks of playing a really good team, are you? Is there a part of you that's interested to see what you guys are made of and how far you've come and to test yourself against somebody who's an equal? Yeah. I, I, you know, until we, you know, I, I've heard uh, or I've been asked that question several times and uh, just about, uh, you know, like an equal, playing a team uh, on the same level as we are, and which I don't necessarily agree with. I think we've beaten a bunch of very good teams. But this is, I mean, they're, 
they're the king of the top. They're the king of the hill right now and because they won the championship, and you have to dethrone them. How you do that? You outwork them Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <clears throat> Shoot me. I will take that water. <clears throat> I'm good, Jerry. And what was the difference of last year's game that you thought? What was the difference? Yeah. I think um, uh, obviously it came down a couple plays. You know, they jumped out to a quick start. We did not play very good pass defense, gave up a big one that we didn't need to give up. And, and um, on offense, you had the ball at the end of the game. We didn't execute to win the game. You know, I thought offensively watching it, we played, that was two very good teams playing each other last year. Very physical, physical game that uh, they made a few more plays than we did. But I thought our pass defense, you know, hurt us last year in that game. And then obviously when the ball in your hand um, to, to go win it, we didn't get it done. Just curious, how much in general on a week like this do you fall back on that psychology degree in terms of motivating and? You know, I think you have to follow back on that when you're playing teams that, you know, there, there's not a whole lot of, I mean, our, we have, if we weren't very intelligent, you'd have to be real creative. There's not a whole lot of creativity in this one. Everybody knows what's at stake. I think the most important thing is that I have to do and the leader's job and our, our coaches is the immediacy, the task at hand. Today's Monday. What's the most important thing on Monday for them to get their rest, to get the treatments? You know, we played a game they did not. So we have to equate this a little bit. So we've had conversations. This will be more about um, uh, just the task at hand. And that's a Monday, then a Tuesday, then a Wednesday, then a Thursday. And, you know, try to get as many camera. I, people want to do interviews in our locker room now and all that. And, I, since now I work for Jerry, uh, we're, I guess we're, I guess we're going to do all that. Uh, so I'm just kidding, Jerry. But uh, I think it's all good to exposure for our players and coaches. But the immediacy is to get focused. The most prepared team will win this game. Second off, uh, unrelated, just it's such a game of routine um, that's so important. Third straight night game. How much does that help you in terms of uh, the guy, the kids? I think it's probably real. You know, I mean, it's not a shocker now. Uh, so I think it does help us that we've had some night games to prepare for this one. Um, Pat Narduzzi obviously has an extra week to come up with something for you guys. How in practice can you, as coaches, get JT Barrett ready to face something that he might not see on film? Well, we've seen it all this year. The one thing about their coach uh, and their coaching staff, they're, they're pretty set in what they do. They're really good at it. And so this is not one of the Star Wars where change of defense every week, you know, and, and there's the inherent problems with that when you face a team that changes, 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 because you're really not quite sure. Uh, but we have to be ready for uh, adjustments. They won't change their defense because they're too good. You know, it's the ones that uh, maybe are struggling on defense or, or come up with something. But it, they'll have a little wrinkle here and there that we have to be ready for. That's why we're watching what we did against them last year. And there certainly have some, how do you prepare for it? We anticipate, and you give them that rep in practice. That's the only way to do it. In talking to your defensive coaches, do they say that they see a lot of difference between Connor Cook last year in that game and, and now? You'd have to ask them. I've not had that conversation yet. I will. I have not been so knee deep in there right now. I haven't had that chance to, to talk to them yet about it. You guys have been so prolific offensively this year. It seems like the one exception might be short yardage situations. That's going to be probably a big part of this week. Um, is it offensive line? And just as you as you analyze the short yardage situation, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, two things. I think, uh, you know, we had uh, a big back last year that kind of ran through some tackles. And I think our backs are pretty good. And, and they're going to get more physical the older they get. But they're, they're playing pretty good. Uh, they, teams have also given us some pretty tough looks to run into. And I think we got to be – we have tried to do a little throwing – in certain situations. So that's certainly an area that we're going to take a look at. And obviously, we had one last year. We didn't con convert on a fourth down. So that's a big part of the game now. I mean, the, the personnel and defenses are so good in those situations that um, you know, that's something we're going to sink a lot of time into. Yeah. Michigan State has, I think, seven 50-year starters. You obviously have a very young team. How much of a factor do you think that is? Well, it's a huge factor. It's uh, you know, last year I felt like we were kind of a veteran team, certainly on the offense with those linemen, and and uh, that's certainly not the case this year. Uh, so that's a that's a big fact. Once again, it's a factor, but not much you can do about it other than go back to work and and do the best you can. So that that certainly is a factor.
And something about Devin Smith, obviously two years ago he had the huge catch. He's kind of had a different role this year. How has he adapted and how important is he? Well, he's doing great. He's the best gunner in America. He uh, does a great job for us on that. He also is our downfield threat, does a very good job on that as well. Um, uh, he's adapted well. I'm not sure how much his role has changed other than the fact we had no one else a couple of years ago. And that was the biggest difference. Now we have a variety of uh, different body types and skill sets that we try to utilize. So his role or value hasn't changed. I mean, it's just a couple of years ago, it was Braxton right, Braxton left, and throw it to Devin down his field. And it's changed a little bit. Back row left, Bill. Urban, last week, uh, you kind of captured the whole picture when you some of your comments about driving towards the student section after they run off 24 straight points. I might have thought you were, were, you know, thinking about what the first play is going to be, the second play, uh, any new things to combat the noise. How often does that happen with you that you just kind of, it's almost like uh, a fan snapshot of what it was like, you know. You're talking about the Penn State game? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the pictures, yeah I think uh, that just, uh, I shared that with our players. I shared it with you guys that that was one of those moments I'll never forget. A young football team, a freshman quarterback jogging out after getting punched right square in the mouth for about a quarter and a half and getting ready to uh, lose a game. Because everything was uh, everything was pointing. We've all seen that. You, you were about to lose a game in overtime to uh, Penn State at home. And uh, our guys snatched it up and did well. That was the offensive line, the quarterback. So I, I just, uh, I'm not sure what that has to do with this, but uh, uh, that's a snapshot. First year here, because they had all the momentum too, it seemed like. Yeah, uh, I, never felt like it, I, I never felt like we were let, let that one go. You know, I felt that uh, they scored right at the end of the game against Wisconsin in the overtime. This one, um, they beat us, you know, uh, and we had to come back and, and snatch a victory from a loss. And, and uh, to do that with a young group of players, that normally doesn't happen. And last couple. Uh, Todd, go ahead. Aaron, a couple of years ago, you said that the Michigan State game thing in 12 uh, was a turning point. The guys It was. <laughs> Is this an opportunity, you know, though, for a different sort of a signature win that – you guys maybe to earn some national respect back? I think so. Uh, I think that is, will be a conversation I have with our players. I think they know that already, you know, that there's been um, this This is a game that to get the respect that Ohio State deserves and has had in the past, you have to go compete and, and win this game. And uh, it's going to be a task, but that's that's real. And last year, after the game last year, it was some of us observed you sitting in a golf cart. What was kind of the immediate thoughts that you were going through, going through your head right after that game? Uh, well, just get a team back from a tough loss after, um, you know, just get them back after a team, a tough loss and go play in a BCS bowl game because you've all seen those horror stories of teams that don't show up for bowl games because they're just devastated. And and your job as a leader and the coach is to move on. And I thought we did, you know, we didn't win the game, but our guys came back and played their tails off. So um, it's part of the game, you know, we're going to, we just got to do the best we can, and, and uh, we'll certainly do our best this week. And final question. Yeah. Yeah. Urban, a couple. Uh, number one, when you look back on that game, though, like you said, Michigan State's not going to change a lot defensively because of how no. solid they are. What gave y'all the most problems last year in that Big Twelve cha- and this Big Ten championship game? Good players, good players, and a good scheme. I mean, that's a it's a rugged. This is a rugged game. You know, we got to be very smart on how we go about our business and preparing the players this week. You know, uh, how much contact they have. This is going to be a that. The one thing about when both the two the two experiences I've had with Michigan State in you know, 2012 and 13, I mean it's a that's a sledgehammers. Those are, these are, you know, say what you want about uh, any other teams and any other conferences or whatever. This team can play at any level, any conference, anywhere, and I'd like to think the Ohio State Buckeyes can too. So this is going to be a big time football game. Uh, that we have to be very smart. Uh, the whole key, and I don't mean to keep going back to this, but there's only one thing that matters, is that when the foot hits the ball at 8 o'clock at night, our guys are mentally, physically ready to rock and roll because it's going to be a rugged game. And the other thing, this, uh, when you look at uh, JT, do you feel he feels he has the freedom now to create sort of like what Braxton had you know, last year and stuff, meaning is he, past, is he over that hump of just running the offense but also being – creative in tough situations and making something out of nothing. What's your sense of how he has embraced that? Well, the one thing that he does as well as uh, even better than Braxton is when something, because that happens quite often, when something is not there, he puts his foot in the ground and gets us to second and four, second and five. I can count three or four times that happened Saturday. 
those were not designed runs, but sometimes things don't work out the way you envision them. You know, some blitz, some someone flashes, someone misses a block, a screen pass, someone peels, and he puts his foot in the ground, and he, you know, we're even teaching him to get down, you know, and, and so you get the offensive football, and, and we, Jerry showed me again the stat, we're number one in the country in average start field position on offense, average start field position on defense. And that's for a variety of reasons. You know, number one reason probably is we don't have penalties on special teams. I don't know if we've had any this year. I go ahead and say that and we'll get French fried Saturday. The other thing is uh, good coverage units. But the other thing is uh, our quarterback. And the last yardage plays aren't, don't happen a whole lot.